Friends, are you very busy? Are you occupied since the moment you wake up until the last moments facing your bed? Are you exhausted enough to call your life complete, functional, and at times perfect? Do you have even just a few moments to seek God and feel His companionship to you within the 24 hours of life's utilization that you have for each day? Well, this online program will just remind you that your Creator, Savior, Lord, Defender, and Friend, Jesus Christ, deserve even just 7 minutes of your 24 hours for Him to guide and inspire you each day. Well, spare a moment and link with God. It's our greatest chance to make things right. In man's negative emotion, is there a possibility that God's blessings will also be felt? Is there something good that will come out from a negative experience, a negative encounter, or a negative occurrence in our daily lives? Well, these questions may sound weird and completely off-target. However, human as we are, we can never go away from these eventual emotions and sentiments in life. The good news is, there are blessings in these emotional disputes. And that is the main reason why we have a five-part series entitled, Final Blessings. FINAL is an acronym that deals with man's greatest negative experiences and perceptions in life. For the fourth of the five-part series, we will be tackling the topic, the blessings of ambivalence. Obviously, A in FINAL is ambivalence. Again, this is a five-part series labeled as the FINAL BLESSINGS. This is another production of the 7 Minutes with God ministry and I am still your online inspirational evangelist, Brother Noy Gonzaga, saying there is actually blessing in being ambivalent. Let us amplify our hearts now with a gem found in 1 John 3, 20. And it says, God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. Friends, the word ambivalence can be defined as a state of having mixed feelings or contradictory, uh, contradictory ideas about something or someone. Basically, this is just another kind of doubt. This is the very reason why our opening verse pointed out that even in the most accurate way that we want to know ourselves, we will always never reach 100%, for only God knows the complete us. In this context, the only entity that can give us the answers to our questions with accuracy and precision is not the fortune teller, not the magician, not the card reader, but the Alpha and Omega himself, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Ambivalence is usually considered by many as a negative trait as it connotes indecisiveness, lack of intellect, or even failure of experience. That is the very reason why when we are ambivalent, okay, one is reputed to be not good enough and may end up in the negative classification. However, do you know that something good comes out of ambivalence? Something positive can grow and cultivate within us when we will have the chance to experience ambivalence. How? Well, let me start with a personal experience regarding a hospitalization of a loved one that ended up in the decision to have surgery for optimization of health. The process of accepting the challenge to settle things and pave the path in route to the fulfillment of the surgery caused in me an ambivalent feeling, asking myself, can I do it? Well, three great things were asked of me. First, we need an aortic graft a very uncommon material used to address abdominal aortic aneurysm, or commonly called triple A, through a complicated and delicate surgery. I was informed this is a very scarce material and it will take so much prodding before you can really have this. We're talking about weeks in procuring this one. Plus, it cost a lot from 40 to 70,000 pesos in a singular use. Second, we were instructed to find eight bags of blood, four of which is fresh frozen plasma 
and 4 will be threshold blood. Considering that we have very limited specialty cases in Bacolod City, Philippines, the preparation of 8 blood bags is in itself a near impossibility to do in 2 days. Remember, in 2 days only. We contacted blood, blood banks and we lost hope because the demand is really higher than the supply and that explains the scarcity index. Number 3. We need to procure a senior citizen's ID. With the patient having no capacity to go to the office of the senior citizens, thus making the process a bit horrendous and complicated. These mammoth concerns cost in me ambivalence, great ambivalence. But every time ambivalence strike me, it really caused me to bend my knees and hold my head high looking to the heavens in prayer. Several angels were sent to answer my prayers. Let me repeat that one. Several angels were sent to answer my prayer. A cousin formerly involved in supply generation helped us and procured the graft just a day before the actual surgery or three days. Remember, usually it is being located for more than weeks, but we have it in three days. Another cousin made some calls and people answered her calls contacting specialized agencies that deal with blood banking and miraculously we were able to secure four fresh frozen plasma blood bugs and four fresh whole blood bugs greatly enough and greatly complete for the need that I have been praying for. Remember, we only look for that in three hours and God's angels are there. A testament that God has already answered our prayers before we have uttered it. Then comes the lining at the senior citizen's office. An employee asked us about our purpose of getting the senior ID, and we explained about our medical emergency. He personally looked for ways and means to make it possible for us to have that ID and booklet in just 15 minutes, of which I, together with my wife, just sit in disbelief why this person is helping us. And not only helping us, but catering and completing our needs. Friends, the graft, the blood, the senior citizen's ID, these things cost me to have the feelings of ambivalence if I can still cope up with the pressures needed for this loved one's surgical procedure. But every time I bend my knees and look up high on the heavens seeking for divine help, God never failed me and he sent so many angels in human form. The purchaser of the graft is an angel. The caller is an angel. The receiver of the call for the blood accommodation is an angel. The facilitator of the ID at the office of the senior citizens is an angel. Friends, these are my angels that God had sent to bless me when I did the right thing to pray in the presence of my ambivalence. I termed such a great divine intervention as, when angels connive, it will happen. Friends, in this experience of mine, it took ambivalence to know that I need God. It took ambivalence to know that when you are to make a great life-affecting decision, you need God. Well, God is just waiting to be called and His greatest chance is our ambivalence. Take a look at this. When we are very sure of what we will do, Often we act on our own intelligence. Where is God in this situation? When we are doing things we already master and have great experience doing such, we act because we are authorities in this matter. Where is God in this equation? When we are doing our job, we boast of trainings, graduate education, seminars, and certificates. Thus, we are considered specialists in our words and in our area of work. Well, what we say are considered as laws and degrees. Where is God in this equation? God is never in the equation when it is about pride, prejudice, positions, possessions, and power. Why? Because these are great lubricants of selfish motives. This is the very reason why sometimes ambivalence is considered a sign of humility. Because when we still know how to fear, how to doubt, how to have double thinking, it is a sign that a certain persona is still working inside our hearts 
And that persona is none other than the Holy Spirit. It takes ambivalence to know that there is a place for innovation, for change, for better options, and for God to convert a wrong thought into a right action. That is why today, if we are still feeling ambivalent in our decisions, in our choices, in our personal interpretations of life, friends, we are still connected with God for there is still a place for Him to maneuver our lives. That is why when we are ambivalent, we are just reminded to bend our knees and look up high above for the answers are already there. Just You, uh, you just need to ask and the Lord will give it. What a wonderful promise. You just have to look up because the answers are already there waiting for God to be released it to you. Now, we understand why there is a positive output in the execution of ambivalence. Often, God wants us to be in the crossroads because He wants to train us to call Him when we are making great decisions. Are you afraid to have two directions to take and yet both are possibility of good entry options? Well, it's a reminder that we can call a friend. A friend who is always there in thick and in thin. A friend who loves it at all times. And the name is Jesus Christ. Let us always remember if our ambivalence is about eternal life. Romans 10.13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yes, we are ambivalent because we need to be dependent on God. Friends, this is the final blessing five-part series with final serving as an acronym for each of the five parts. And at this moment, we have just concluded the topic, the blessing of ambivalence. Join us again as we will continue uncovering each letter in the final acronym so that we can complete the final blessing series. This is the 7 Minutes with God ministry, and this is still Brother Noy Gonzaga, your online inspirational evangelist, saying, Our ambivalence is the greatest reminder that we should always bend our knees and look up high above because we have a partner in all orders, ordeals of life, and that is Jesus Christ. God bless us all.